If you're a woman in the Church of Christ, this message is for you. Today we'll answer the question, do you see what I see? My mother was an elementary school teacher. For years, I watched her put everything she had into her job. The toll that it took on her was tremendous. Being a teacher was not an easy job then, and it's still not an easy job today. So even though my parents begged me to go to college and offered to pay for it, this 18-year-old newly married woman decided I did not need a formal education. I wanted to be a mom. I would spend my life taking care of my husband and my children, and it would be great. My mother-in-law made it look easy. She sewed her children's clothes. She planted a garden every year and canned fresh vegetables. She worked puzzles, read books, decorated her home for every season, and had a freshly made dinner on the table every night when Greg's dad came through the door. They even sat down together and ate as a family. So that was my plan. The first few years were awesome. The kids were little and kept me busy. Then they started going off to school. I was faced with being home alone all day, nothing to do. Turns out I don't know how to sew. I hate puzzles. Not much on reading, and I'm certainly not a good cook. Planting a garden? Um, doesn't that involve dirt and bugs and sweat? No, thank you. So now what do I do? All of a sudden, it became abundantly clear. I had no hobbies and no real skills either. Yikes. Okay, so time for plan B. I couldn't be a teacher because I chose not to go to school, but kids and teaching was the only thing I really enjoyed. So I applied to be an assistant at the elementary school where my children were going, and I've been doing that ever since. I love it. One year, a part of my training, I attended a class that would change how I view the world. The instructor placed a picture on the screen that looked just like a skull. She asked us all to come up with a title for the picture. It looked like a skull to me, so that's what I wrote down. Then she went around the room looking at what everyone had written. Thankfully, she didn't choose mine, but she grabbed some poor ladies up across the room's title to read. All of a sudden, she began yelling at this poor woman for her title. She said things like, are you kidding me? Are you trying to be funny, young lady? Do you think this is a joke? I ought to throw you out of my class right now. Do you think this is funny? Her tone was cutting and accusatory. Then she snatched that paper away from the startled looking woman and held it up for the class to see. Well, class, she announced, it looks like we have a comedian in our midst. She called my picture ugly skull. That was about the time I started shrinking down in my chair. Please don't let her come over to me, I said under my breath. I'd written skull on my paper too. Then she walked over to the overhead projector and enlarged the picture. To my surprise, the skull changed to a beautiful woman sitting at a dresser, looking at herself in the mirror. I was shocked. How could this be? From a distance, the picture was clearly a skull, ugly and a bit scary. But when you got up close, that same picture was a beautiful woman. Once she saw our faces, the teacher started laughing. She apologized to the student she had scolded and crossed her arms and smiled at us. She had clearly made her point. Now, for the educators, the message was different than it will be for us today, but in a way, it's all the same. She wanted us to realize that different students process and see things in different ways. Don't people do that too? Just because they do not see it your way doesn't mean that they're being disrespectful, she wanted those teachers to know. As Christian women, we will have different views on things too. 
Now, I'm not talking about scripture. Yes, when it comes to scripture, God is in charge. But I've heard of a lot of people leaving their church family over what types of songs were sung, a change in worship times, or even what color we paint the building. Sisters, this is not pleasing to God. Women can be especially brutal when it comes to even more personal decisions, such as how we discipline our children, breastfeeding or bottle feeding, or even whether the woman works outside of the home or not. The truth is Satan will use any kind of differences that he can find to separate us. Mark 3.25 says, And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. If we want our homes to stand, unity is critical. If we want our churches to stand, unity is critical. 1 Peter 3, 8, Finally, all of you have the unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Notice all the qualities Peter instructs us to have along with unity. Sympathy, brotherly love, tender heart, and a humble mind. You know, my sisters, often we look at the lives of others and we see them from a distance and we believe that we see the whole picture clearly. But just like that picture of my story, when we get really close, that picture will change. It's easy to believe that we have the whole picture when we're seeing the actions of our fellow Christians, but often we are not. That's why brotherly love is so important. When we have a Christ-like love for others, we will want to see the best in them. We will also need a tender heart. Just because you were able to overcome a problem or handle a situation effortlessly does not mean that your sister will be able to do the same. We are all different people with different strengths and weaknesses. When we truly have a tender heart, we can be compassionate with those that struggle with the things that we find easy. Maybe it's house cleaning. You keep your house beautiful, they struggle with it. What about what they feed their children? You're a health food nut, they feed their kids chips and ice cream. Or maybe whether or not they're able to be there every time in church when the doors are open. Maybe you can do it, but there may be something in their life that prevents them from being there every single time. Something that you don't even know about. Peter ends that verse instructing us to have humble hearts. Humility is one quality that will allow us to even consider that we could be wrong or there might just actually be more than one right way to do things. Our instructor showed us that day how powerfully negative jumping to conclusions can be. She assumed that her student wrote ugly skull out of disrespect, but it was actually what that student saw when she looked at the picture. We will never see things exactly like someone else does every time, but we cannot allow our differences on matters of opinion to separate us from our Christian family. If you have allowed your different views on life to separate you from those whom you love and love you, please make it right. Call them, write them, text, email, do something to get that conversation started again. Don't let another day go by without reaching out to them. When it comes to matters of opinion, it's okay to agree to disagree. What is not okay is to allow Satan to use our stubborn pride to divide the house of the Lord. I hope you'll give my message from God's Word some serious thought and prayer. Please subscribe to this channel so you'll get notifications when I post my weekly messages from God's Word. Tell your Christian sisters about this channel and pray with me and for me as we take this journey called life together. If you want to know more about me or Let's Get Real Ministry, go to www.letsgetreal.info. Now there's no apostrophe on the word let's in this email, in this website address. There you will find videos, blog posts, and information on my ladies Bible class and video called Side by Side. You can also read about upcoming events and my latest book due out later this year. If you have questions or comments, you can comment right here or you can write me at getrealinspiration at gmail.com. 
Oh, and don't forget, please hit that like button. Until next time, my sisters, please don't forget that God loves you and so do I.